Hello. Today we're going to be going through this um, galvanized metal uh, substance in Substance Designer. Uh, so as you can see, this is the finished product. Um, and so before we jump into the graph, we're going to go over a little bit of reference material. Uh, and I kind of dug up like two different types of galvanized metal. Um, the first is this type of metal that's like very um, crystallized and you can kind of see like the different color crystals um, and that's kind of like the main feature of galvanized metal I guess you would say um, and then the second type of galvanized metal it's it's kind of the same thing but that crystalline pattern is is more subdued you can kind of see it it's still present but it's like covered up with like other things like tarnish and like other surface features. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to make both variations of these. Uh, but I just wanted to show you guys this before we like jump in. Uh, so you kind of have like a reference for what we're going to be doing. Uh, but yeah, this is the finished thing. This is what we're going for. Um, so yeah, let's just get into it. Uh, not overly complicated, actually a lot simpler than last week's graph that we went through. Um, but I guess let's just start with the, the base pattern. Uh, so to make the these crystal chunky pieces, we're, we're using two different methods. Um, and you can kind of like mix and match like what you like best. Um, but these are the two methods that I found that work pretty well for this. Um, the first is we're going to be using uh, this crystal one noise and out of the box. It's pretty good. I didn't really touch any of the settings uh, Any of the parameters, but you can if you want um, and Then I ran it through a levels uh, Just brightened a brightened it a little bit uh, And then what I did is I put it through a, a gradient map Where I'm, I'm using the gradient map almost as like a levels node and where I'm clamping it uh, and then I'm adding making the white like, like more of a gray color. And that's going to go on top of this blend node. And then the bottom is going to be uh, the levels node from before. And it's just going to go through a transform 2D where I've kind of, I've, I think I hit divide once, maybe twice, I think once. And then I've rotated it and moved it around a bit just to kind of scatter the pattern around. And then since we're doing that, um, the problem with using transform 2D is that it doesn't uh, make things seamless. So as you can see, like, if I zoom out far enough, you can kind of see there's like lines on the side, which means that our pattern isn't seamless anymore, so that's not good. Uh, so then what we're using is a Make It Tile Photo Grayscale, and it does a pretty good job just on its own. I don't, you can mess with the settings if you want, but I didn't. And then we're using the same gradient map from before, um, and then we're just like clamping it like before, but we're using a different color gray. And that's the background for our blend node. And I'm using Max Lighten uh, to blend those two together. And so you could do this again uh, with like another crystal noise, just like maybe set on a different like random seed and then blend those together again. And that would look probably pretty good. Um, but just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm kind of like using another method. Uh, and another method is to use a tile sampler and you can use a tile sampler and uh, set the pattern to like disks or even squares would probably work. Um, but I think disks look better. And then you plug it into a distance node. And the distance node kind of like merges all the gaps. It kind of like stretches out all the, all the little disks or squares and kind of makes them smush into each other. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to explain with words, but... Uh, you can kind of see what it does is it, it, it gives like a crystalline kind of uh, jaggy um, poly polygon shape, which is, which is obviously what we're going for here. Um, yeah, so then we're running that through a levels node and I'm just, uh, I'm darkening things a bit. I didn't want to go too dark. You can if you want. Um, I'll kind of show you what that does in the end, uh, but I set it about yeah, about here. It seems about right for me. And then, like I said before, I'm blending these two together using Min Darken. And so this is our base 
uh, crystal pattern for the galvanized metal. Uh, and then we're going to warp the pattern around a little bit. And to do that, I'm using directional warp. Uh, and for the directional warp, the, the noise is going to be Perlin noise 1. Or excuse me, the intensity input is going to be Perlin noise 1. And then our input is obviously going to be our, our pattern that we just worked with. Um, intensity is going to be around 8. And I just picked like 90 to minus 90 degrees as a direction. And that, that works fine. And then I'm running it through another directional warp. This time our intensity input is going to be uh, fractal sum base, and I think this is customized a little bit. Uh, yeah, our fractal sum base is, had, a, had the roughness taken down um, min level at 4 and max level at 8 to give us something that looks a little bit like that. And then I'm running this through levels. Uh, I'm clamping it uh, like so, and then that's our intensity input for the next directional warp. And I'm, I'm set the intensity to 25 and the degrees to like 45, but you can play around and see what works best for you. And then I'm taking it through a final directional warp. Uh, and this time I'm using Perlin noise zoom. I believe it's all stock values. Yeah, it is. And then I'm running it through transform 2D where I hit divide twice and it gives us something like this. Uh, and because we divided it like an even number of times, it'll it'll tile perfectly, so we don't have to use that make it tile photo again. Uh, and then we set the intensity to like four and the warp angle to something random. I just went with minus ninety again, and that's what we get. Uh, and you can see the difference that that all, all these directional warps made. Uh, so this is after the directional warps, and this is before. And it's not doing much, but what it is doing is it's just kind of like, just kind of scattering things, pushing things around a little bit to make it like less less procedural. Um, and I think it does a pretty good job at that. So here is kind of where we're going to split off. Um, and so this we're we're using two warp nodes, uh, and this is this top node is going to be our diffuse uh, our diffuse line. And then this bottom warp node is going to be our height and normal roughness in AO. And so basically, both of these warp nodes are using the same input intensity. It's just a fractal sum four. Uh, and then what I've done for the diffuse is I've just completely turned it off. Uh, and so this gives us like a really, uh, you know, like like this crystalline uh, pattern like we saw before. But if we take the warp node and we turn it up to something like 2, you know, it starts to resemble something more like this other reference that I showed you from before. Uh, so by playing around with this warp node, we can kind of determine uh, what style of galvanized metal we want. Um, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to keep it at 0. Uh, but just so you know, you, we can very easily switch back and forth between those two references that I showed you just by playing with this warp node. Um, I guess I might as well I'll just go through the diffuse uh, while we're here. Um, so out of this warp node, I'm going with a blend node. And what I'm doing is uh, ever so slightly Oh, okay. Well, I, I guess I have to explain this warp node now. Um, so the bottom warp node for the for the height, normal, and roughness. I'm I'm just doing the exact same thing, but with the rough or the, with the intensity at like two. Uh, and then I'm blending that on top of the other warp node, with copy at like twenty five percent. And um, so I'll show you what happens if we turn it like completely off. If we turn it completely off, it it looks. Uh, it looks too procedural for my taste. It looks too too perfect, and you know you you probably wouldn't see something like this. Um, you you may I guess, but it's not what we're going for. We're going for like subtle imperfections. So we're just going to blend a bit of that that noise, that warped noise, back on top of it. Um, we can also take it pretty high and get something like that. I mean that might look pretty cool actually. Um, Maybe there's like a level of like tarnish or something on top of it. Um, but we're going to stick with 25 for now. 
Um, and then out of this blend node, we're going to go into a gradient map. And I'm just mapped to like random kind of grayscale values. Basically, we this is just going to be the color of of the different colored crystals um, in in the in the diffuse. So I mean, I think black or even like dark gray would probably look really really wrong here. But like these light grays and kind of medium grays, I think are about right for what we're going for. Uh, and then to kind of because this is really strong, uh, I'm just blending. Uh, I'm blending it with a uniform color, and this uniform color is kind of like a. Uh, it's kind of a medium gray, kind of mixed with like a, kind of like a, a cool blue, to kind of give it like that that metallic kind of color. Uh, I think it looks pretty good this way, and I, I blend it with add sub, at like 0 0.08, uh, but you can play around with that to see what what works best for you. Um, so then I'm getting into all the, uh, you know, all like the scratches and all the kind of imperfections and spots and stuff like that. Uh, because as this is now, it looks really, uh, really perfect. It, it looks like, you know, it doesn't look like metal at the moment. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to first add some scratches. Uh, and so I have a directional warp here with a um, scratches generator as our input. Uh, I think it's all stock um, values here. And then we're using a Perlin noise one as the intensity input. And uh, with our directional warp, I've just chosen a random angle that I think looks pretty good. And then I've set the intensity to 30. And then I'm going to decrease the uh, the scale a little bit with this transformation 2D. Um, and I, I could run this through a make it tile photo, but uh, you know, I'm not. <laughs> uh, I probably should actually, I can kind of say, I was going to say that, well, it doesn't make a huge difference, but I can see it, 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 it does. So I'm just going to bring one in, uh, just run it through real quick. Sometimes the, the make it tile photo gives like really odd results um, but it seems to be doing pretty good so we'll just stick with that um, so then what I'm actually doing is I'm using this uh, this grayscale uh, image as an opacity mask for this blend node and I'm taking the previous blend node and I'm just putting it in uh, in the middle and then I'm putting a hue saturation lightness node uh, on top of it, and I've just lightened it a little bit and decreased the saturation and turned up the hue. And so that, I mean, this is one way of coloring things is you can just use like an opacity mask, um, you know, instead of like taking this and, and blending it on top with like subtract or linear dodge or something like that or add sub. Um, this is just another method of, of colorizing uh, your things in Substance Designer. So what I did here is I just basically lightened it because like scratches generally, you know, they kind of dig a little bit into the metal and the metal underneath uh, is like obviously a bit newer, like it hasn't been exposed uh, to things. So it's like, it's cleaner uh, and therefore lighter. So that's my logic here. Um, you know, I guess you could kind of argue for the opposite that, well, like maybe it's darker because like the scratches are old and like gunk is kind of build up in them. You know, it kind of just depends on like your material and like what you think is right. But, you know, I went with, um, I went with lighter and I think it looks pretty good. Um, so that's what's going on here. I'll get to these other, what we're doing it with it further. I'll get with, I'll get with that later. Um, so for scratches two, we're doing almost exactly the same thing but we're just using scratches one and we're using Portland noise zoom and we're running it through a warp node with intensity like 0.1 uh, and then we're running it through a directional warp uh, and we're using the same Portland noise one and our intensity is like 10 and it's just like a random level and then we're running it through levels and we're clamping it uh, like so and this is actually giving us like a really cool result instead of like these long um, these long wavy strands, what it's doing instead is giving us like these short little stubby marks 
uh, and it looks it looks really different from from these, which is exactly what we want because you don't want to blend like two exact same noises on top of each other because that would just be a bit well pointless. Um, and then to, to color it, uh, I'm doing the exact same thing before. I'm just taking a hue, saturation, lightness node, uh, putting that on top, and then putting the previous input, uh, previous uh, blend node as the input in the middle. And then what I've done here is I've actually, I've gone the opposite direction as I've turned up the saturation, turned down the brightness. And that gives the result that these, these scratches are darker. Um, so like I said before, like maybe these are older scratches or deeper scratches that are kind of occluded because they're so deep or they have something kind of built up in them. I'm trying to see if I can find one. Uh, to show you guys. Yeah, I think this is probably one here. They're not very common, this type of scratch, but you know, it looks something like that and it kind of contrasts with the other scratches, which, which is pretty cool, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, if you look at it from a realistic standpoint. Uh, so at this point, it's looking pretty good. We got some scratches in here, but in general, it's not looking anywhere close to being realistic. Uh, so we're gonna add some some spots on top of it. And um, our spots are, I think we're just using a, yeah, we're just using Gaussian uh, spots too. And I'm running it through the transform 2D node and I hit divide once. And again, I'm using this as a mask. And then uh, I'm taking the hue, saturation, lightness node and blending a, like a lighter, a, just a lightened form of, of this image on top of it. And it's giving us something like this. So we have like a bit of, uh, a bit of variation in, in color. And you can kind of see this like in the, in the reference is that we have like, uh, we kind of have like these, these, I guess they're like striations or something like that. But also we have like these spots. I'll zoom in so you can see a bit better. Uh, we have like these spots here that are like light, lighter and darker. And that's, that's what I'm trying to emulate here. It's like metal isn't like one just gray color. You know, it's, it's like a few. And it's almost like never completely smooth or flat. It's always got like a little bit of something going on. Uh, especially if it's like, you know, used metal. It's kind of things like this. And even in galvanized metal, you know, it's not supposed to rust, but you know, it still collects stuff and it can still tarnish. So that's what I'm trying to emulate here with all these different passes. Uh, and I just noticed that this should be named spots one. So yeah, we're going with more spots. Um, and this time I tried to do more of this like directional kind of noise like we've seen. Something like this uh, or something like this, this kind of gray stuff here. Uh, and so to do that, I just took a, a dirt one and I ran it through transform 2D node, divided it uh, in half using this divide button. And then I ran it through directional warp with uh, our blended node from back here as the intensity input. Uh, and this kind of broke it up and made it, it, it made us, uh, so we got some kind of striations. Uh, and by changing this degrees, um, rotation thing, you can kind of get like what direction you want your striations to go. And I think you could also probably crank up the intensity uh, if, you, if you wanted to, but I think we're going to stick with, I don't know, 25 looks okay. We'll go with 25. And I'm actually not using a hue saturation lightness node. I'm actually just using a gradient map and I'm blending this on top with uh, subtract. Uh, so that gives us something like this something like this kind of this kind of dark noise that you see here. Um, moving on to our last spots, I just kept this nice and simple. Um, I think I'm using like a black and white spots. Oh, excuse me, I'm using fractal, no, that's not right. Yeah, I am using fractal sum one here. Uh, and then I'm leveling it here, like so. And I'm using it as an opacity mask with hue saturation lightness node. Uh, again, and I've cranked up the hue, uh, the saturation, the lightness up just a little bit. And, uh, you know, that just adds just a little bit more uh, subtle kind of uh, detail on top of this metal. And you can kind of see the difference. You can see what's going on here from the previous. 
Oh, and I've blended this with copy, obviously, and uh, opacity one. I should I should point out that all of these are using uh, copy, and then you know opacity at like halfway or full. Um, depends on how strong you want them to be. Like the scratches, maybe you should only go like halfway if you want them to be more like more subtle. It kind of depends if if you think that they should be light scratches or a bit deeper. Um, so yeah, that's almost about it. We have like a couple more things for diffuse, but we're gonna go through them now. And so now we're actually using the black and white spots too. Uh, and I'm putting it through a levels node and just kind of clamping it a little bit like so. And I'm now I'm using this as an opacity mask again with the hue saturation lightness node where I've just kind of darkened it and given it like, uh, you know, like a more bluish hue and then blending that on top again uh, with copy. Uh, and it gives us something something like that. You can kind of see it's just adding adding a little bit more uh, on top of it to give us this more realistic uh, illusion of metal. Um, and then for tarnish, so this one's kind of a hit or miss. You know, I think I, tr I tried to replicate something more similar to this like I did before. But ultimately, I don't know if it really ends up being that great, but, um, you know, I gave it a shot anyways. Uh, so what I started with was a cells one. I set the distance to 25. I put this in a transform 2D node and I divided it and then I stretched it out and rotated it a little bit just to kind of randomize and um, just kind of change up the pattern a little bit. And then since we're doing that, I have to run it through a make it tile node and then uh, I'm blending it with um, this fractal sum base again. And I'm running it through levels and clamping it like so. And then I'm taking it into a transform 2D and I'm stretching it out like this to kind of get this horizontal uh, kind of noise, these kind of like uh, striations, if you want to call them that. And then I'm blending on top of the previous node with um, add linear dodge, about half. I'm running it through a warp node, just very low intensity, like 0 0.001. You really don't want to go anything higher than that. Uh, if you do, it just kind of goes, kind of goes crazy on you. And uh, that's not the effect we're going for. Um, and as our gradient input, I'm using fractal sum one again. And then we're just going to warp it with itself at like 0 0.01. And then I'm leveling it off here a little bit. Uh, I'm actually, what I'm doing is I'm actually inverting it and then just uh, adjusting the levels a little bit. And we're gonna run through a blur node and blur it just a tiny bit. And then again, this is going to be, okay. And then I'm running it through, no, this levels node doesn't appear to be doing anything. Um, or maybe it does. I guess I've brightened it a little bit with this with this levels node. Yeah. Um, and then I'm, th the, anyways, this is being used as an opacity mask again, and then I'm blending uh, just a darker, um, less saturated version of, of the metal on top of it. Um, and I've set the opacity on, uh, really low and the blending mode on copy. And I can bring in more of it. Um, you know, about half looks pretty good. You know, even like all the way up. It's probably a bit too much. But half is pretty good. Um, you know, t to me, it looks it looks fine. It doesn't look too out of place, but it, it looks more like, you know, grunge or like soot rather than like an actual part of the metal. You know, I don't know. You can kind of be the judge on that one, but it, it, I was trying to go for like this type of noise, but I don't think it really looks like that. Uh, but it would probably work fine as like a, a tarnish. So and that's what I named it. Um... And then finally for a diffuse, I'm running it through just a sharpen node, just to give it like a little bit, a little bit extra crispness. Um, it's a little bit blurry. And then a final uh, hue saturation lightness node where I'm, I'm darkening it a little bit. And then that's our base color exp uh, output. Okay, so that's the majority of the graph out of the way. The height and normal and roughness are just kind of like more of the same, but I'll go through them really quick anyways. Um, so from this bottom warp node that we talked about before, I'm taking a levels, 
and I should actually I should actually clear this. And um, what I've done is I've clamped it just a little bit uh, to get something, some kind of pattern, some kind of noise like this. Uh, and then I've blurred it uh, with a blur high quality grayscale at intensity like four. And we're getting these kind of, um, uh, I guess they kind of look like bubbles, kind of like ripples, small like this. Um, and then I am blending the scratches from before on top of it uh, with subtract. Um, at the moment, I'm not actually, I have the opacity set to zero, so they're, they're not being blended. And uh, I'll show you why we don't want these maybe in the normal map. I'll, I, I'm, I'm explaining it because maybe you do, but I don't think it looks very good. Um, so if we set the, if we set the opacity up to like 0.5, you can kind of see what it's doing. Um, and it kind of makes the scratches look deeper and wider and um, more round, which, you know, again, it depends on your use. Like maybe you want them to be this type of scratch, but I, I didn't. Um, so I just, I just turned the opacity down to zero. But, you know, if you're making this for somebody else or for your own purposes, you can expose this, you know, later. And it would just be really easy to kind of bring those into the normal if, if you want. Um, and I'm doing the same thing with the, with the scratches, the second scratches. Um, but again, I've, I've turned them off. Uh, I'll turn them on so you can kind of see. You know, that doesn't look half bad when they're on. But again, it, it depends on what, like, what you want to use it for. I think it actually looks pretty good like this. So I'm going to just going to leave that because like maybe these are deeper, older scratches, you know, and that would also explain like why they're, why they're darker. It's because they're deeper. Um, right, and now I'm not bringing in any of these spots or any of this other stuff really into the normal map because it's just color, uh, you know, it's just pattern information that we don't want reflected in the normal or height map because this isn't really affecting the height of the material. It's just like surface information. Uh, so I guess you could if you wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. Um, so our final step for um, for this uh, normal map and height map and ambient inclusion is to bring in that, uh, I think it was the fractal, oh no, it was the black and white spots from before. So we're bringing that in again, uh, we're inverting it, and then we're just blending it with copy on top. Uh, in fact, we could probably, we could probably ditch this invert. Um, you know, I don't know. No, I think we'll stick with the copy. And I was going to say we could we could just ditch the invert grayscale and then use a different blending mode. But I'm not going to really mess with that right now because I, I got it where I want it. Um, but anyways, we're just blending a little bit of this noise back on top. Um, and and you can play with this opacity slider to figure out like how how gritty you want the metal to look. Like if you crank it up just like to point four or something like that, it looks it looks really textured, um, something like this. But you know if you live it down to like point one, you know it's more of a subtle kind of grittiness. Uh, like I've said like ten times by now, it's up to you. Um, so yeah, and then we're just running it through like a normal. Uh, a normal node with intensity three, um, then outputting to normal. And I, I completely forgot to mention this before in the beginning, but I've updated to Substance Designer 6.0. Uh, and what's really cool is with Substance 6.0 is now they actually give you an option to um, remove the alpha from in the normal node, which is really cool because before you had to use the normal uh, Sorbel node, uh, which is fine. Um, but now like the actual normal node has an option to remove alpha. So that's like really cool, <laughs> I guess for me anyways. Um, yeah, and then to get our height, uh, not that it's gonna be really important um, in this case, but I'm just running this blend node through a histogram range uh, just so we get like more mid value grays and then I'm just outputting it. Uh, you know, we could probably like level this off even more if we wanted to, because like, you know, this is mostly flat and 
really there's going to be no no real height uh, in this in this map. I mean, maybe you could add the scratches in if if you decide to add the scratches in, you could do it, but it's I don't think so. Um, uh, and then ambient inclusion again, it's not going to be real huge because there's really not much height variation. There's not really much that needs to be occluded. Uh, but I'm just taking the height uh, this from this blend node, and then I'm just running it through ambient occlusion. I've cranked up the spreading a little bit. I think it's set. I think by default it's like 15.15. Um, actually, it might look better at 0.15. So yeah, I'll leave that there. And then I'm outputting to ambient inclusion node. And then for metallic, I'm just using uniform color, um, grayscale, and then the output is like white, like pure white, because uh, obviously it's metallic. Um, you can kind of play with this. Like if you don't want it to be so metallic, you know, you can kind of play around with that. Like maybe you think it looks better at about a mid-gray. It's, it's up to you. Um, okay, finally we're going to go through... Uh, the roughness and obviously it has to be roughness because we're using the metallic roughness workflow and we can't use glossiness uh, if we want metallic. Uh, well, at least in Substance Designer we can't. Uh, in the materials it doesn't really give us the option to, we either have to have metallic roughness or specular glossiness. So um, anyway, uh, for the roughness we're going to start with a uniform color. Um, and we're going with a 77 gray. Uh, and then we're going to blend the scratches on top of it. So since this is roughness we're working with, um, darker means it's going to reflect more light and lighter means it's going to reflect less light. Uh, and so like I explained before, I kind of the way I see it is like these scratches are, are, light, are lightening the surface um, because they've scraped up the new metal uh, so obviously we, we want that shinier, we want that to reflect more light. So I'm using subtract with an opacity of like 0.1. Uh, and if you wanted it to not reflect light, all you would have to do is just switch that to linear dodge. Uh, and I'll see if I can try to... So here's a scratch here, and this is with linear dodge. And that's with... Uh, actually, that's not a good example because that wasn't in the light so much. Um, so here we are with subtract. And then, yeah, so that's the difference, basically. Um, I like subtracts. So we're going to stick with that. And then I'm doing the exact same thing for the other heavier scratches from up here. Uh, and then for the spots, I'd like them to be reflected in the roughness map. So I'm taking them from this transform 2D node, and then I'm blending them with linear dodge uh, and opacity of like 0.1. Um, and then also with these with these second spots, we're doing the exact same thing. Uh, linear dodge point one. Um, I've made this into a gradient map for some reason. I'm not 100% sure why I did that. I think it was just to clamp the values, perhaps. Yeah, I just I just ran it through a gradient uh, a gradient map to clamp the the noise values so that there's so the values are more black and white rather than like gray-ish, if that makes any sense. Like they're sharper, I guess we could say. Um, and then I'm using linear dodge, uh, 0 0.01. Uh, same thing for spots three. I'm just taking this output from the levels before and blending with uh, linear dodge on top. Um, and our final node for this workness, uh, roughness workflow is going to be this black and white spots. Uh, from before. I think it's black and white spots. Yeah, black and white spots too from before. And we're running it through levels. I think we're inverting it. No, we're just uh, we're just bringing down the white output a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to blend it on top with subtract. And I'm not actually using this for some reason. I have to figure out why. Um, Oh, okay, yeah, right. So what I wanted to do, but I forgot to do, um, is I wanted to tie these two opacity sliders together. Uh, and so the more you bring this black and white spots into the normal map, the more it will be brought into the roughness map. And I just forgot to do that. So 
it's going to be 0 0.01 here with subtract for roughness, and it's going to be 0 0.01 here with copy for the normal map, uh, ambient inclusion and height map. And so that makes like um, all these little bumpy details, you know, it, it makes them all uh, a little bit shinier, I guess, um, just to kind of break up the, you know, like the reflexivity of the surface, I guess we could say. Uh, again, just to kind of make it look more like metal uh, that's been roughed up a bit. Um, yeah, so that's the whole graph. Um, and this is our finished product. Uh, I think that's about all I wanted to cover. I'm trying to think here. Yeah, I think I did cover everything. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you were able to follow along with this and I didn't go too fast. Uh, hopefully it was helpful to somebody. Um, if not, let me know. Uh, if it was helpful, let me know. Um, if you have any suggestions for things that I should make and go over in the future, I'd be happy to hear. So, you know, just let me know. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching.